hi everybody welcome to my channel in this video i'm going to watch another language other than my own and that is korean so i apologize in advance for mispronouncing words and names i'm really sorry for that so in this video we are going to take a look into the case of the hasong serial murders in south korea between 1986 to 1991, a series of assaults and murders shocked the nation, becoming the most infamous in South Korea's modern history. So the question is, who is the Hasong serial killer? Will he ever be caught? Can justice be served in this case? But first, let's start from the beginning. The Hasong serial murders were a series of assaults and murders of women with ages between 13 and 71. The crimes happened in the rural city of Hasong in the Gyeonggi province in South Korea between September 15, 1986 and April 6, 1991. Hasong before 1986 was a place where everybody knew each other and most of its population was actually poor. People lived scattered among several villages between forested hills and rice paddies. People worked in nearby factory where they created electrical goods and others were rice farmers. Crimes in Hasong consisted of the occasionally robbery or break-in, nothing violent. But everything changed with the Hasong murders and the brutality of how its victims were killed. The Hasong murders consist of 10 murders. All of its victims were women. So let's take a look at the victims in chronological order. On September 15, 1986, Lee Won-hin, she was 71, and she disappeared while returning home after she visited her daughter. Four days later, on September 19th, her body was found in a pasture. On October 20th, 1986, Park Hin-suk, she was 25 and disappeared after getting off the bus while returning home. Her body was found on October 23rd in a canal. On December 12th, 1986, Hwan Jong-bon, she was 25. She disappeared in front of her house and her body was found on April 23rd, 1987 in an embankment. On December 14, 1986, Lee Kesuk, 23, disappeared after getting off the bus while returning home after meeting with a prospective marriage partner. On January 10, 1987, Hong Chun-young, she disappeared after getting off the bus while returning home. Her body was found on January 11, 1987. On May 2nd, 1987, Park Hun-ju, she was 29 and she disappeared while going to give her husband an umbrella. Her body was found on May 9th, 1987. On September 7th, 1987, Han Ki-sun, she was 54. She disappeared after getting off the bus while returning home and her body was found on September 9th. On September 16th, 1988, Park Sang-hee, she was 14, was found murdered in her room. On November 15, 1990, Kim Mi-jung, she was 14, disappeared while returning home and her body was found the next day. On April 3, 1991, Kwan Sun-sang, she was 60, disappeared after getting off the bus while returning home. Her body was found on April 4, 1991. In all of the cases, the victims were assaulted, gagged, and they were strangled. 
and in most of the cases the killer used stockings or socks or a blouse to do the killings. These items actually belong to the victims and most of the victims were found with their hands tied and with wounds on their bodies. Initially, the investigation was of the responsibility of local police, but after women were found dead within three months, they brought in investigators from a nearby city to help them. As the murders kept on happening, residents formed squads and patrolled the streets at night, armed with sticks, and women avoided going out after dark. Remember the Jack the Ripper when they had the vigilance committee? It was something like that. I want to remind you the crimes happened late 80s, early 90s. So, of course, at the time, there were no surveillance cameras. There was no phone tracking and DNA evidence testing wasn't widely available. And this is going to surprise you. Because of the impact of the murders, they used more than 2 million police officers to investigate the murders. I'm not lying. This is not a mistake. 2 million police officers. Can you imagine? 2 million. 2 million. And the total of number of suspects actually reached 21,280 individuals. 40,116 individuals had their fingerprints taken. 570 DNA samples and 180 hair samples were analyzed. And these were huge numbers huge can you imagine men at the time were actually afraid of being questioned by the police and police decided to spread out in teams of twos because the first five murders happened within a 3.7 mile radius in Hassan. with this they hoped they would catch him but it didn't work he killed the next victim somewhere where the police wasn't present so, during investigation, rumors started that the killer actually targeted women who were wearing red clothes on rainy days. So, female police officers wore red clothes so they could trap him, but it didn't work again. Others went to a clairvoyant, others performed a shamanistic ritual on a voodoo scarecrow, but nothing helped. The killer kept on killing. According to survivors who managed to escape, the killer was in his 20s. He was 5 feet 1 to 5 feet 6 tall. He was slender, he had short cut sporty hair, and he didn't have double eyelids. He had a sharp nose and soft hands. Then a bus driver and a bus conductor gave description of a man getting on the bus shortly after the seventh murder on September 7th, 1988. The characteristics of the bus driver were actually similar to the witnesses who survived the attacks. A suspect sketch was drawn based on his description. At least four individuals who were considered suspects took their own lives in the 90s after being investigated and allegedly abused by the police. After the murder on April 3rd, 1991, the killing stopped and slowly the case went cold. As the years went by, the question remained, who was the killer who terrorized Hassong? Will they be able to catch him in time since criminal charges had a 15-year limit for prosecution at the time? Hassong's serial killer went on standby and time was running out. This case was so famous in South Korea that it actually inspired several movies and K-dramas such as Memories of Murder, Confessions of Murder, Captung, Signal, Tunnel, Partners of Justice, Flower of Evil. The movies Memories of Murder and Confessions of Murder are actually really good. I recommend you. 
Some of the K-dramas were also really good. Check it out. I recommend Signal, Tunnel, Captain. They were really good. They really were. So, guess what happened next? In September 2019, the case took a turn. 30 years after the last known killing, the police, using a sophisticated forensic technique on DNA testing, linked a man to at least three of the nine deaths. His name? He Jong Che. Initially, even though DNA linked Yi Jong Che to the crimes, he denied the allegations. He also had the support of his mother and other residents in their hometown, saying he was a good person. And these claims are actually surprising considering where he was at the time and why he was there. At the time of these findings, Yi Jun Che was incarcerated and serving a life sentence for drugging, assaulting, and killing his 18 year old sister in law. So the claims of him being a good person seem a little bit far fetched. According to criminal law in Korea, prisoners who are serving life sentences can be released on parole if they show an attitude of genuine repentance. Yi Chun Che was in for parole and saw this opportunity fly out the window when he was presented with the DNA tests which linked him to the murders. Eventually, he confessed. He Chun Che was born on January 31, 1963 in Hasong, Gyeonggi. After graduating from high school in 1983, Chun Che joined the Republic of Korea's army and served as a tank pilot and then he was discharged in 1986. Well, he worked for an electric construction company. In 1990, he worked at a construction company in Chongpa, Yongsan. He was a crane driver without a license. In March 1993, he quit his job. In April 1992, Yi Jun-chae married a bookkeeper who eventually left him in December of 1993. On September 26, 1989, Yi Chun-chae broke into a house with gloves and weapons. He was actually discovered by the landlord. In February 1990, he was sentenced to a year and six months for robbery and violence. Chun Che filed an appeal and he said that he had been beaten by an unknown young man and he entered the victim's house while being chased. And this is ridiculous. He was being beaten and chased and he still got time to put on some gloves. Can you make a sense on that one? It was September. It wasn't cold. But still he got probation. On January 13, 1994, Yi Chun Che invited his 18-year-old sister-in-law to come over. He then drugged, assaulted, and killed her. He hit her body. Then he went to his father-in-law to help him find her. Her body was found two days later in a hardware store snow-covered garage. She was wrapped in a blue tarp. Her head had a plastic bag and her hands were tied with torn underwear. Yi Chun Che kept asking, how many years do you serve in prison for assault and murder? He raised suspicions and then he was arrested on January 18, 1994. He later denied a responsibility and the court dismissed his confession due to police coercion. However, Yi Chun Che was convicted and sentenced to death in May 1994. In September 1994, the conviction was upheld and in 1995, the death sentence was reduced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. She became victim number 10 of the Hwasong murders. 
On October 2, 2019, it was announced Yi chun had confessed to the killings of 14 people, and these included all 10 Hasong murders victims. He made a detailed confession and he even drew pictures to explain. He lurked in farmland or on paths in deserted areas in the suburban city before attacking women. He also confessed to more than 30 assaults and attempted assaults. Yi chun Che stated he never thought the crimes would be buried forever. chun Che stated when he was questioned by the police at the time of the killings, he actually had a watch of one of the victims on him. But the police only asked about the fact he didn't have his ID with him. He actually was surprised he wasn't considered a suspect because he didn't try to hide things. So he was baffled he wasn't caught sooner. He apologized to the family members of his victims and a man who had been wrongfully convicted for one of the murders. On July 27, 1989, Yoon Sang-gyo, who was 22 at the time, was arrested for the murder of the 8th victim, Park Sang-hee. He actually admitted to the killing, but it was considered a copycat of the Hasong murders. Sang-yu was sentenced to life in prison, but then he appealed, alleging the police coerced him into giving a false confession through torture. The appeal was denied, and he served 90 and a half years, and then he was released on parole in 2009. On November 13, 2019, he filed for a retrial following Yi chun Che's confessions, which showed that he had indeed killed victim number 8, Park Sang-hee, who was 14 at the time. The district's office confirmed Yoon Sang-yo was treated cruelly by the investigators and that a forensic report by the National Forensic Service was fraudulent. On December 2019, eight of the original investigators were booked and charged with abuse of power and illegal detention. They forced a false confession and falsified documents. Sangyo's plea for a retrial was accepted, and on November 2, 2020, He Chun Che testified and confessed to the murder Yoon Sangyu had been falsely convicted. The police chief stated Yi Chun Che had psychopathic tendencies. He was unable to empathize with the victim's pain and suffering and he showed off his crimes. They also said he had low self-esteem due to his introverted personality. While completing his mandatory military service, he experienced a sense of accomplishment and self-reliance. After he was discharged, he felt frustrated by his monotonous life, so he committed sex crimes to express that frustration. The motive for the crimes was confirmed by the police to be relief of sexual desire. Yi chun Che is still serving his life sentence for the crimes against his sister-in-law in Pusan prison. At the time of the killings, South Korea had a 15-year statute of limitations and even though that time has increased, He chun Che will never be prosecuted for the murders because the statute of limitations have expired in April 2006. Till this day, He chun Che is known as the Korean Zodiac Killer and the Hasong Strangler. So this is the story of the Hasong murders, a series of murders which haunted the nation for 30 years until they finally found who the killer was. He Chun Che, Korea's Zodiac Killer, a man who inflicted pain and suffering to his victims, their families, 
and residents of Hasong. Unfortunately, in this case, bad police work caused more victims than it should. And I am sure you are all surprised with Yi Chun Che's statement he could have been caught earlier when he was questioned on his high D and he had the watch of one of his victims on him. It makes you wonder. It happened back then. It can happen now. And all I can say is be careful when walking alone at night. A lot of cases fall victim of bad police work. So I'm not going to excuse that, but I want you to pay attention to this. Imagine living in a place with a low criminal rate. Crimes are the occasional robbery and that's it. So when violent crimes like homicide happen, it's not surprising the local police doesn't know what to do immediately. They just weren't prepared. It doesn't matter in what year it happens, cases go unsolved because police in that location isn't prepared for something that doesn't happen there. And a lot of the times, bad police work is hidden because of shame and embarrassment. But victims deserve better. And to end this, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell button. Thank you for watching. See you the next time. Stay safe.